Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video. But hey students, this video is not for you. This video is dedicated to all the engineering instructors, all the teachers who teach programming, as well as who teach at some engineering universities, to all the HODs, to all the founders and co-founders of all the engineering campuses and also known as engineering colleges and universities. This is a special video which I really wanted to do for, from a long time and I have got dozens and hundreds of emails filling up my inbox about this subject. So let's talk about it in this video. I should have locked the gate. I should have thrown away. To all those people who have been writing me to make a video on this subject about the situation of engineering colleges and engineering students here is my open reply to everybody and let's talk to all those people who can do something about it all those engineering people who are associated with some some kind of a head positions maybe hod maybe founder or co-founder so i really want to address you in this video so one thing is fact that the thing how you are applying all the things in engineering colleges and university is not working out really well and I'm talking about all those rules that you are saying as th these are compulsory rule and you have to follow them regardless uh, you are not telling the students why they should be following like 75% attendance criteria or maybe uh, visiting daily or why they are choosing this particular subject in their stream uh, this is not clear to the students and one thing we all can agree on this is this is not working out well and the proof of this is that see the, the condition of engineering campuses and the engineering students uh, right now in India. This is not really great and you cannot deny that. So there is something wrong going on because these all students who are like cream quality students uh, till they are in the school as soon as they move into engineering campus they are not able to survive really well. And something is going on wrong and we need to address this. The first important aspect of solving the problem is first accepting that yes, there is a problem. So make sure you accept this first of all. Next up, let's also accept that the way how the engineering syllabus and the curriculum is being designed, uh, especially for the CS students, some of, this, some of their subjects are intermixed with other branches and for a mechanical student, some subjects are being mixed up from computer science. This is not really working out well. And also a lot of engineering syllabus that you are teaching around is really outdated. So we really need to talk about this, that how we can actually upgrade all of these syllabus, how we can move forward. First and foremost, you are not able to understand the student's mind and you really need to understand this otherwise things are not going to work out. Just like in any other industry in a corporate sector there are business analysts who just goes out in the market and try to read the client's mind whatever the product they are selling they try to reach out their target audience and try to understand what is their mindset and how they can serve them really well similarly these universities needs to understand that how a student's brain works and what they are really wanting here and how they are thinking right now because as you can see the students are one of the rebellious group uh, of people uh, in all of the community uh, take the community of like government people who are working in the government jobs or nine to five jobs or maybe it's a small age group the engineering people are the most rebellious I'm not saying in a bad sense but they are rebellious in the way that they want to explore every single option every single possibility that they can do with their careers so hey Hitesh, everybody is thinking on the right way. Students want to learn and explore and we want to teach them. So where are the things going on wrong? The things are going on wrong in the way I call it as fear learning. You are trying to impose the concept of fear learning. You are imposing a lot of rules. You are imposing a lot of uh, mandatory subjects, mandatory unnecessary rules on the students and are asking them to follow them blindly. Now this is not how the things are going to work anymore. The dropout rate in India is increasing day by day and a lot of people who are thinking about dropping out is increasing like exponentially. This needs to be stopped. So Hitesh, how you are dealing up with the situation? Just to give you some of the ground up students, I am already teaching more than 120,000 students all over the globe. I'm not imposing any kind of attendance rule, any kind of uh, submission of the assignment rule any of them student and at any given day at any given time you can just watch the stats and at least 10,000 students are learning at the given time whether that's a Saturday night a Sunday night uh, early Monday morning whatever that is 
at some moment or some point of time at least 10,000 students are live and learning from my videos. Okay, so you are listening to me right now and this means that somehow I have actually came up with a system which is far more interesting as well as impactive as compared to your fear learning system. So what is my system by which I'm able to inspire so many students and I'm able to uh, just focus them and give them the idea that hey, you should be learning, you should be working hard. Now there are four main pillars of the things that how I actually see the things. Now I have studied quite a lot about the engineering student brains as well as in general students brain and I came up with a system of four pillar solution and I really want to share this in this video to all of you. Step number one is give a spark to the student. This spark is really interesting and really really important. Students want to listen from established industrial person that what they can do in life. This is the spark. They want to see that how by working hard, by learning something, they can reach to an X point in their life. This is super important. This spark cannot be delivered uh, by a regular person who has not done something big enough in their life. So for this spark, you need to call up some industry experts. Maybe that person may be from Bajaj Automotive, uh, maybe from Tesla if you can afford, maybe from Facebook, Google, uh, Flipkart, Snapdeal. So you need to call up those person and you, you really want to make sure that they give at least five or 10 minutes of session to the student so that they can get the spark that yes this is my inspiration I want to become like him this is the most important pillar the spark to the student second point is also related to the spark which is inspiration and again these are two separate things and make sure you give them the second one more often and on to a regular interval which is inspiration students are really easily distracted so you need to make sure that you give them time to time inspiration make sure you give them a little focus that carry on into your android development or maybe an engine working or maybe a robotics and just keep them inspiration from time to time they really need to listen about your talks uh, what you think about life and all these things so inspiration is also important maybe you want to call up some person from other outside campus or anything like that but again this inspiration is important and make sure you don't cut out that this is super important here the third most important thing is make sure you give them right direction. Students are really explorative in nature. They want to explore every single possibility that they can do with their life. And for that, you need to give them right direction. You don't want to force them that, hey, you should only learning be the Android or only be learning the web development or only should be learning the robotics. This is a wrong way of doing the things. Don't impose, overimpose the things that just show them the correct amount of right path, that these are the options that you can, you can uh, pick up and can get started. This is known as giving them the right direction. Once they are into that direction, if that direction is your subject of expertise, then only direct them only then. If that subject is not of your expertise, just openly say that this is not area of my expertise and you should really be asking to somebody else about this subject. Obviously, somebody would be saying, hey, Itesh, uh, talk something about robotics or something. I'm no expert in that subject, so I cannot talk about that. If somebody is going to say, hey, Itesh, talk something about microcontroller chips, I cannot because I'm not a subject expert in that. So don't be shy, just accept that you are not expert in all the domains and show them the right people who can direct them in the right direction and of course, don't force them. The fourth and the final pillar of this entire thing to work out is a gentle kick in the butt. No, I'm not saying that be harsh to the student. This would be the wrongest thing that you can, done, do, that you can do to the students. Make sure you give them a gentle push, a gentle kick in the butt. Now, most of the people are hard working. They really want to do something with their life, but still there is a small community of people in the students who really don't want to do anything. They are just lazy and you want to give them a gentle kick, give them some inspiration or impose a certain rule on that particular group of the student only. Or maybe you want to give some competition to them, some prize money or maybe some scholarship or something like that so that these lazy people can also take participation in what the thing that you are trying to do. So these are the four pillars that I have been following for so long in my entire life to make sure the student learns something and I don't have to be pushy about uh, any kind of unnecessary rule to be imposed uh, to them or anything like that. And I have figured out that this is working really great for me. I can also understand being a university, it's not easy to just change the curriculum just like that 
uh, or maybe just in introduce Android or iOS development just like in your curriculum. But again, uh, I have seen uh, some of the universities in the past have done this by arranging like extra classes on Sundays or maybe just giving a free time slot to that particular learning things and all these things. Yes, of course, if you are going to work really hard and want to think about it, you can change the life of these students. And this is really essential. The way how the engineering college and universities, these things are moving towards the direction, I am not happy with that because they are not at all inspiring it anymore. A lot of people are thinking about dropping out because they are not able to do the things which are currently in the industry demand. They are not able to learn about Android, iOS, web development, machine learning. These are the things which make students really interesting, at least in the computer science domain. And similarly, such new more modern things are there in uh, robotics and uh, architecture and all of these things. So either you should really focus on updating these things, updating your curriculums, or things are going to be really worse in the near future. I know most of the university people have already closed down this video because they don't want to listen to anybody. And if this is going to be the case, you are going to see the things really, really worst in the near future. But regardless of this, it was my duty to just uh, make sure that this topic needs to be covered up. I need to say it out loud because I was receiving like hundreds of emails about this subject. So these are my open thoughts. Again, just to remind you the things, remember my four pillars, how you can tackle students into a right direction, as well as things are really not going really good in the engineering campus. So think about it. And I'll be fine with this To be the end for you and me